Welcome to another IoT developer event. Today, I have um, the pleasure to have Alexander Pesta with me. The topic will be a domain driven approach to design, implement microservice REST APIs. A very long title, I know, but uh, um, it will be a very interesting uh, topic we will cover today. Um, Alex, if you don't know Alex, Alex is part of the professional service team at SoftBG. He's the principal consultant that he will cover the topic today. Um, today, we will do this slightly differently as in the past events, so we would to keep the mics open, but still I would ask you to mute yourself if you don't have any questions. Um, this session will be more interactive because Alex will do a lot of live coding and during this live coding, of course, sometimes we have break and we want to use the time um to discuss things or maybe ask questions. So um, feel free open to open your mic. Um, and ask the question in the meantime. Of course, you can also collect your thoughts and then uh, ask the questions in the end of the session, the Q&A session. As always, all the IoT developer events will be recorded. I will upload them to YouTube after the session. We will also uh, provide the material and links after the session so you can do your hands on with the things what Alex just showed you. Okay, now it's time to hand over to you, Alex. Get started and go. Okay, great. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, let me share my screen. This is the right one. Can you see this my screen? Yep, you can see it fine. Yeah, perfect. So um, today I'm talking about um, uh, approach I used the last time for my microservice I developed. Uh, it was a microservice which had a quite complex REST API. And I found out that um, a few things uh, which helped me quite a lot to, uh, to, to develop this microservice and also design the, the API. So what, uh, what, you can expect today. So we are really talking about an, an microservice and, and REST API we we uh, develop. So we are really focusing on that. And the live coding I will do in in Java. I will use Maven for for the for for building and all the dependency stuff. And you will also see I will use uh, a few plugins there to to generate. Um, Open APIs, for example, and I will of course really uh, develop a REST API, not, nothing else. So it's it's really um, the standard we use usually when we develop microservices with a REST API. So um, what is really important uh, that out there, so when you start developing an, an API, uh, there are two different approaches you can choose. You can design first or you can code first. Um, I was, uh, before I, I did my last implementation, I was a big fan of code first, actually. Um, but sometimes when you have um, a complex API and you have to discuss this with customers, with partners, or with other developers which will consume your API, then uh, it's a lot of things in your mind may be clear, but not what the others expect. And for that reason, I tried the design first approach. And for that, it was pretty nice because it was easy and fast to get feedback from, from the consumer side. And you probably know if you have already designed a REST API, um, you can use Open API for that. And Open API has has a lot of tooling around. So you you have um, there are com commercial products in the in the web you can use to to use uh, forms to uh, insert your stuff and then get out an open API specification. You can use Swagger. There are a lot of different tools you can use. There are some of them open source. Some they have free trial versions you can use um, in this in this. This session today, I will use Spotlight. This is also now acquired by Smart Beer, which is also known from Swagger. 
So uh, you can also use Swagger UI. I will also use that in this session as well a little bit. And I will also show you how you can start rapidly development with based on this um, open API specification. And again, I'm still a big fan of code first, but uh, but for the beginning, when you in the design phase, it's pretty nice to to use the open API specification just this one. But later on, I will change in my session the the, the way I will use then my generated code, which I have modified, but then I will do generate out of this code my open API specification. And um, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's, it's a long old dream of some people to, to develop a, a model, a domain specific model, and then generate code out of that. But you will see, and also in my session, that's a generated code is it's not the best, but maybe it's my opinion, but usually if you are a developer, you have your own style, you have your own um, libraries you use. And so it will never be the same when you just write your code by your own. So that's why I use this generate code only as a starting point. And later on, I will, I will change, I will just generate out of my code, so documentation, the open API specification. Yes, uh, before I start, uh, two points I would like to address here again. This is what I already said. I, I had this in another presentation, this slide, but this shows the most uh, important aspects in my point of view when you design REST API. I don't want to go through to it because we are really focusing today on design first approach and later on on development. So. Really, so when you have designed your API, then you will really quickly start developing it, and you don't want to write too many boilerplate code or stupid code like entities and all the things. This would be nice if you if you could generate these things. Okay, let's let's start with the live coding. So um, I have an 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 requirement here written. So I would like to, to today develop a microservice which has uh, or extended the Comlosity API with a contract object. So uh, you could imagine that a device has a specific contract uh, and this contract defines if this device can be started or stopped via operation or can be configured. So um, this is really a simple task creating a microservice where I can handle and manage my contracts for the devices. So yeah, let's move now to the IDE. Uh, I will use Visual Studio Code. Um, usually in Java, I used um, Eclipse for a long time, but now I, I move more and more to Visual Studio Code uh, because that also a really nice integration of, of um, Generative AI, so I also use uh, here Copilot. Uh, we can also, I will also show you, how you can also create an open API specification with, with Copilot, it's also possible. I, we can, we will see, we will try. But anyway, let's let's start um, the microservice I would like to develop. So I just will move to my um, workspace. And um, I, I'm using also the Maven archetype to, to generate my microservices. And I have here a, 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 a good, really good um, head I will show you today. Um, let me just yeah, I still have this here in my pipe. Um, ah, yes. So, and I've created here a batch file, which is taking from my, you probably, uh, I have to go back. Um, I'm also using the Go CLI tool a lot. And I like here with the Go CLI tool really that you can manage your sessions pretty nice. And I was always uh, wondering if I could also use the session from the Go CLI tooling tool, uh, from CLI tool to, to get into my Maven archetype, and this is actually possible. You, I, you, I have opened already the MS Project batch file, which is just calling the Maven archetype, 
and set this uh, base URL and also the credentials from, from the environment variables, which are set by the Go CLI tool, which is pretty nice. I don't have to write so much um, base64 code stuff. So uh, for that reason, I just call now here my NS project batch file, which directly calls also my arc type. Ah, sorry, I forgot to set my session before. Sorry. I have, of course, to set my session. The Go CLI. So um, I have also a tenant which I usually use as MS template for, for developing. So I have set it now, and now I start my project. It takes a bit. So I call the microservice contract. I keep the artifact name and also the package name. And there we go. That's done already. So I can now open the project. So contract. So I have created already my my app, and I also use uh, a Spring tool in for Visual Studio Code, which are also pretty nice. So it will also load the beans and all the things I should know, and I will also will also find the application class. The stuff client Java language server, I don't know, should work. Let's wait. We also build. Usually it's faster. Anyway, I will change something for. Um, I will use a uh, dev profile as right now. So hopefully I yeah, now it's getting this one. And I will just try to run it, my microservice. So this looks good actually. So I will also try if if I can reach the endpoint as well. Yes, it's working. Um, my user credentials were still in the cache for that reason. It was directly working. So the microservice is working. I have here my example controller, you can remember. Uh, when you use this, you can, of course, remove that and uh, create your own um, controller. So now let's start with our API, this important one. And as I already said, um, I use the stoplight, um, stoplight tool. Uh, which is which you can use for free for one project. Um, it's actually a commercial one, but you can start uh, creating your your open API specification in this typical uh, form way. So you, you can enter your things. So if you are not really familiar with with open API, I mean you, you probably know also this channel files. Um, it's it's cumbersome to read and also to write actually um, some people if, if they do this day by day they are pretty probably pretty good in it but I'm I'm not doing this very often for that reason it's nice to to have such formulas you can insert your things so you can also define your 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 entities or your objects so I've created here a contract which is a name a valid from valid to 
start operation, stop operation, config operation, and an additional object with have the ID in it. So this is actually then always the entity which is getting back from which is stored in the in the in the complexity as managed object, for example. And here these are usually the, the request bodies. So when I when I post or put data to the contract, I will use this one. Um, I have two paths. So one path is for specific contract information to get a specific contract, to update a specific contract, and also delete a specific contract. So I also here describe something and I defined this. I, I, I don't want to do this in this session here at, before. That's why I prepared it. So it's, it's easier. I mean, it's also really quick to use this tool. But I don't want to show how to use Stoplight today. So I prepared this already. And with that, you get also this contract channel. Uh, sorry, I would like to show the code. So this is the open API specification for it. So if I change something, also the open API specification will change. And with that, you can do a lot of things. Um, I use in that case the, the 3.0 version. Um, this has a reason because generators and also the Maven plugin I use is not capable of using 3.1. So I use an, an older version of that. So what I will do now, I, I have now designed my, my API. I discussed this with my partner and with the consuming side. And now I just copy here my, my, my open API specification. And what I usually also like really a lot is this record editor. So I just put this now here. Uh, there is a semantic error. Jump to line 83. Ah, yes, this is something. I don't know why this was generated. It's wrong. Oh, sorry, I don't want to store this. So, so here I can also use this to to discuss this with uh, customers and um, developer how the API looks like. Uh, you, you see everything. You see, you see the schema, so, so different operations I will do, the parameters, uh, query parameters you can define here as well, and here, which is pretty nice, you can also generate code. And um, there are also an, an, so you have to know Swagger was, was, so, or Smart Beer, they really pushed Open API a lot. And now Open API also has an, an is, is now moved from Swagger to, to a standalone project where a lot of other customers and, and people contribute. And here there are also different um, generators you can use. But I, before I, I set up the session, I generated both of them and actually the output of the Swagger editor was better than this one. I don't know why, but it's maybe also something to do with you know, every but it's taste, but I, I will use this regular editor code. It was better to, to consume. So I now I generated the, the Spring server. So I got a zip downloaded. And let's go to the zip I use for that. Uh, a moment, I have too many open windows. Um, so let me just open here my little commander. So so this is uh, the zip I generated. So here I have the source code which was generated. So you can see also that usually if you use a, a, a generator of open, open, open API, you can define much more how the path look, would look like in the end. And you have much more configuration possibilities. <clears throat> but I will keep it really simple because Actually, I just want to use a few classes out of this generated code. And I will just use the contract API and the controller and also the model. 
part of things is too much for me, for my taste, and I will uh, modify these classes uh, later on in my example. So let's move to my um, contract project, and I just will copy these data in my um, in my project. So I will use at first the model, copy the complete model, and also the controller RP and the controller. So I go now to Visual Studio. Both well, they are red because also the package name is wrong. Uh, no problem. Let me just take this from this class. Package, I will also move this. And the package. And you see here also a lot of imports which are not working. For that reason, I will just remove them. And also this one. They are not yet in my dependency list, but this is no problem. So the same with here. So remove the package, it's model. So I take this one again. Whoop. Uh, don't have this right now. And also one. So okay, so now to to get the right imports, I will also use an example my microservice I used. Where my last microservice, I used this approach, and um, this is an Eclipse. And when I go to the POM file, there are two dependencies really important for these documentation uh, annotations. And I have put this here to Spring Doc Open API version. And I will also just copy this properties at first to my POM file to have the version information and then I will copy also the dependencies. So Spring Doc Open API, these both things I need. Now it's going. Okay. So yes. So, okay, so now I will organize my imports again. So now I have the schema here as well. This one as well, organize imports again. And same for contract API. Yes. And all of this one. Yes, this one. Okay, so now no errors anymore. I will just also stop my running microservice. So, um, um, so when I look at my model at first, um, you can see here there are also a lot of things which I don't need. Uh, for example, that this code is generated. I mean, you can keep it if you like. Um, they also use heavily also this validation method. And uh, you can take it, but um, uh, I usually don't use it much. Uh, also the JSON property I don't use usually, but I keep it. If to keep it simple. And um, so they are generated code here as well. So get name and set names, they get us and setters. And uh, they have also created here some uh, methods to have this, I don't know how to say it, this telescope possibilities that you can um, really um, set the data, so build builder patterns um, to 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 has to build easily this contract object as well. I mean, you 
really depends on your taste. So you, for that reason, this is really a starting point, then you can manipulate this as long as you like. And again, this makes, of course, much more sense if you have a complex API. If you have a really simple API, um, you don't have to follow this uh, generated um, way. But um, I had a pretty complex API I discussed and I designed, and in, in one day I had pretty quickly my control was set up. So it was no big problem. And I mean, usually I did not use these annotations, but these annotations are quite useful later on when I um, generate out of this code my open API specification, because I have here also the description stuff in it, which um, yeah, makes it makes the code also sometimes a little bit more readable if you don't take too much annotations. But you, you also have some kind of documentation already in the code, which I like. And as the generator also, it's something what I don't usually do. Um, when I create a controller, the controller has an, an API, but it's not a bad idea actually to do that in that way as well. But I found out that uh, this is this would not yet work. This this um, generated code. Um, I don't know why they did this in that way. Uh, I could not get it work because the request mapping, which is defined on the interface, must be on the controller side. And um, yeah, that is something I have to change as well in order to get the controller work. And also something like this is also not, yeah, Usually you, sh you write auto wired, but actually this is also not needed anymore. So again, you can manipulate your code then later on. So let's let's make this REST API work. So um, I have also to, which is also pretty nice. I will not use the request mapping. I will use the shorter one, the delete mapping. And um, Take this out of the API and put this directly on the controller. Yeah, maybe it's a configuration way to as well to get it work with a with an interface, but I did not find it. So I don't know. So let me move change this to get mapping. So get contract. So then we have uh, this one. Get mapping. Contract ID. Post mapping. And as you as also can see, uh, the generated code is using a lot of um, text, so strings. Usually, there are also um, enumerations for media type, for example, which isn't also could also be better. But I don't will change this right now. So let's put mapping. So and the last method is the put method. Okay, so now I have my controller and um when I look at the example controller, actually, I also add here request mapping on the controller. Uh, I mean, this is usually what I do. You don't have to do that, but um, we'll just keep it. So I have now the contract API. So let's change now an implementation of 
the easiest one. So the contract ID. So this is a get method where I can get a contract by ID. And this is a code you see, they return no implemented internal server error. Um, I will move remove this and I will create here um, um, a contract entity contract entity so contract entity set id uh, that id i take directly from this one that's correct that name ah yes what i already said you can also now oh, should actually no i'm a bit name Valid form should actually work. Ah. ID valid from. Come on, give me some good hint. What? Okay. Usually co-pilots a bit more and more. Ah. Uh, yeah, so I will just build. So well it from value two and this configuration operation no stop. What operation two so start operation is allowed and stop operation two and a configuration. S force. So, pop, 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 and name. Yeah, I mean, it's just an example how you can construct this with this um, class which was generated. Ah, name. Oh, no. Ah, name I have already. Sorry. Okay. So then I have the contract entity and I will turn this one here. Okay, so okay, so let's try this out. It's this is already working. So let's start. Okay, this one. So, yes, looks looks good. Um, the only thing is contract ID is ah yes, I have to set here all the right contract ID. Well, for example, so and then I show exactly my constructed object here. I generated. So usually um, this is the first thing what I do as well. So um, I mean, 
usually you design with with this tooling your open api specification but of course usually there's an ongoing process and so when i have a certain state of my open api specification then i start implementing and then i can already just um, mock this api as well like i did here to get started and then of course you also start developing your service um, so there's always a controller which handles really the api and the controller is calling a service. I don't will start developing here a service which would probably create or get an, a managed object out of Comlosti, for example, and uh, maps all these API to specific fragments, whatever you want to do. And I, I, will, I don't want to do that. But what you can see here now, I have pretty easily started uh, with this controller. So um, I got also a few best practices here as well. Um, what actually I also like is that it, it separates um, these, these annotations, which are only necessary for, for the documentation later on from the code. I haven't done this in my last microservice. I put everything in the controller. I can also show you, which makes the code sometimes difficult to read in that case. So when I, for example, look on, uh, don't mind, common controller, and you can see here there are a lot of uh, annotations and here even more. And yeah, this, as you can see, the, the, the code actually is much less than the documentation. So you have a lot of the code is all big and difficult to read because of this annotation documentation stuff. And if you put this stuff to the API, um, you don't have this in the implementation, which is, from my point of view, quite nice to, to do. So now I have my, my microservice, the controller is working. Um, and now what I would like to do is to change the my my um, way of working at, at the moment I design first and then I generate it out of this design code but would it, so when I now um, continue working on this microservice and on the API I will maintain my code because I'm a developer I don't want to maintain um, this open API specification and get ugly code out of that. So I have really beautiful code, but I would like to have an open API specification and a documentation of this API. And you have to know if you have a complex API and you have a microservice developed, it, the people who would like to consume this, this API, they need documentation and it's pretty important, but I don't want to put too much effort in this documentation. And I also would like to have this automated to generate this documentation out of my controller. Because if I change something, if I add, for example, a query parameter to it, this is something very often happens. A filter is needed, an additional filter for my, my get operation where I get the contract list back. And this is pretty fast done but this of course must be uh, documented. And for that reason, I will also go back to my uh, my reference uh, microservice. There are two plugins, <coughs> sorry, um, actually more plugins which help me here. And let me go, yes, this is this one. Um, yeah, this com these plugins I need all and I will also talk a little bit uh, of I will talk about these plugins so I will put this to my plugins so what that these three plugins do um, so at first um, I need um, an integration test and I need this integration test actually to to um, 
generate this um, open API specification via Swagger or we have the open API. And this uh, integration test so is 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 uh, starting in microservice uh, and this open API gets generated based on my controllers, which does Swagger do? You probably know if you enable Swagger UI, it does the same. And um, this the next plug in here is reading is going to the to to the um, path where this open API is published by by Swagger and um, generates an open API JSON out of that. So this I I, I started with a jaml. I mean open API you can define as JSON or jaml. You can also use jaml, no problem. Here I just use JSON. And this JSON is then put to the docs order folder. So I will also create here in docs folder. I will do this. This is also good practice to if you have a, a bigger a bigger documentation. So usually you have a readme readme markdown file here. And then if you have more things, pictures, and so on, um, usually I create a docs folder and add this to, to this one. So I will do this as well. So I will generate the open API file specification to the docs folder. And the next plugin is reading this open API JSON and generates a markdown file out of it. Um, Again, there are a lot of generators outside. I had this already open. Uh, let me just go to the browser again. Ah, sorry, this one. Um, generators, yeah. And open API generators, there's a big list. So you can generate clients in various uh, programming languages. You can generate a servers. We use the Spring server here and you can also generate um, ASCII doc, CV key and what I use is a markdown, it's a beta version but you will see the outcome, it's it's not perfect but it's it's usable. All right, so um, yeah, let's go. So I will use this generator, this markdown generator and this will create uh, the markdown structure in also in the docs folder. And um, there's also something which is really important to know. Usually when you start your microservice, all endpoints are secured. So this would probably not work without authentication, but there's also a trick you can, and I will show you as well. Um, there is an, an configuration I have to use um, in my security config of, of Spring. And here you can um, disable the security for for this API documentation which is generated by 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 this worker or Open API um, automatically. So I will have to copy this one. Oh, one moment, just I will copy the name. So I have also to generate here and config new file java and I copy this complete configuration spring configuration this one so organize imports so with the set, the, this endpoint is not secured anymore. All right, so let's build this. And if I've done everything correct, then it should, should generate the open API specification, maybe doing install.
Oops, sorry. Takes a bit, so now the generator works. Open API looks good. Yeah, created this documentation now. And in my docs folder now, I have my Open API JSON file. I also have here in my Visual Studio Code a Swag of Studio installed. So you can also use this one to view. And much better is now. I will also show you the markdown file here, which generates out of this open API specification this uh, documentation, this markdown documentation. So for example, the contract. I mean, again, it's not yet perfect. There are a few informations missing, but uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a good start, I think. And I used it also in my um, last microservice I created. Yes, a service request microservice. And this documentation is also here linked and in the docs folder. And here you can see the API is much bigger. I have much more model models. And you can see if you have such a quite um, extensive REST API, the approach is pretty, pretty nice to start with. And um, I don't have to maintain this documentation too much and and it gives you already quite good insights. Yep, that's actually, yeah, that's it. So I think we are also on time. Any questions? Hello? Yes, still here. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have um, a question for Alex? No, then. No Okay, then um, maybe what you should take away or what was my takeaways when I did this. Um, so in the beginning, when you have a microservice to develop with a REST API, and um, it's always good to, to start only with designing. Use such a tool as Stoplight or the, the Swagger editor, whatever you want. I mean, you can also write this open API. Shaml files or JSON files, if you like, if you can. I mean, there's also a lot of documentation outside, and there are also um, plugins for the Visual Studio, which helps you with designing these things. You can also use, ah, this is actually what I can also show you, if no questions. You can also use generative AI to do that. Then, um, then, uh, yeah, again, use open API. It's, it's, I think it's, it's good. It's easy to digest for, for also for other developers. So you can, again, you can just generate out of these clients. Um, with open API, you can use a lot of rapid development tools, which are pretty good. I mean, you have seen uh, if you have to modify and adjust this, this code, but, um, yeah, it's, it's working. So, and, most important, document your API and make it as easy as possible for you as developer to maintain this documentation. And the plugins, the Maven plugins, do a pretty good job in my point of view. Um, Stefan, did you, I haven't seen, did you also create um, these questions? Ah, yes. I did, I did mm -hmm. <laughs> in the background. And uh, yeah, what does people use Open API? Does people use other tools to generate REST APIs or to just design REST APIs in the in the early beginning? Um, I, the first question I asked was actually um, um, if they use design tools at all, and it was I would say very, very mixed mixed answers. Um, so some of them are using design tools. Um, 
but also uh, a couple of them I'll jump in directly straight into the code. And the second question I asked was if they know Open API, and uh, most of them know it, but and 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 also I think um, um, 30 um, 43 percent use it already, but all over 50 percent have heard it but never used it mm, okay. actively in the API. That's uh, the, 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 the results of the survey. Okay, and uh, let us also use generative AI for that. So, um, so I just copied the the stuff from my from my um, slides. And uh, yeah, the co-pilot is also doing quite a good job. You will see. So writing me an open API specification for a contract API. This is attributes. Uh, let me see. Okay, accept. So let's look at the swagger. And it's almost the same what I did. Um, yeah, it has just one contract object, which is a bit problematic because the ID, for example, is set by the by the um, community later on, or it depends on how you design that. It can also be a good starting point using Open API, uh, sorry, uh, generative AI or Copilot or whatever you you like. So, also a good thing. I haven't done yet, but um, you can use it as well. Yeah, I'm a bit wondering why no questions. Was it too boring? <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I think you covered it very well, Alex. Yeah, and of course, uh, again, Open API can be used for any languages, as you have seen. They are also for, for anything, Python, JavaScript. Um, yeah, it's not just for Java. I, I'm not sure about this uh, generate automated generating stuff, but I'm pretty sure for JavaScript, NPM, and all the things, it's also possible to use these tools as well. <clears throat> okay, that's it. Okay. Then uh, thank you, Alex, for presenting this interesting topic. Um, Again, I will um, um, after the session ended, I will upload the recording to YouTube. If you have in the meantime some questions or you want to um, do the steps Alex just showed you, like to generate um, open API, generate documentation, have questions about tools, I think we are happy to discuss this with you, maybe on the tech community. Um, just create a new uh, topic there and we can dis discuss it there. Again, yeah. And yeah, and I did not mention. I mean, we also have this uh, uh, from Thomas Winter's team. They're also uh, developing in, in, in generator, which is reading Open API and generates code. Um, they are more sophisticated regards configuration. Um, yeah, you can also of course contact those people. Um, they can also specific define also how the generated code should look like. I mean, with this tools, I don't have any um, possibility to to change this generated code or say, please use another REST client, for example. But uh, with with the RD team from Thomas Winkler and uh, Jörg, for example, uh, they they work on such things as well. OK, good. OK, then let's close the session. Thank you, everybody, for attending. See you All on right. one of the next Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.